It's great to be with you here at St. Elizabeth's. Um, last night, Laura Lee, my wife, and I had dinner with Father Dave and Tilly. We had a great meal together. We enjoy each other's company, and they gave me this incredible list of all of the amazing things that have been done, both in terms of the renovation of the facilities, but not only that, but all of the various outreach projects and things that you're involved in. I I think particularly the outreach are the heart of what it really means to be a Christian. Uh, if you notice the liturgy, it comes up again and again and again. It's the word service. And the reason we're called servants, which we are, is because we're people who engage in acts of service. It's really a part of the heart of what it means to be a Christian. This is also the first Sunday of Lent. I don't know what you think about when you think about Lent. It has a lot of character tours. You know, like, what's for Lent? Well, um, I'm going to give up something. And that that becomes the heartbeat of Lent, is trying to think about something that you can give up. And to be honest with you, if that's the focus, more often than not, what that means, I'm, I'm trying to let go of something that will be as painless for me as possible. So I can, as it were, just get through the season and then come back to Alleluia's in Easter when I can eat and drink whatever I want. Um, or it may even be something that you choose to take on, like some act of service or some particular effort that's going on here in the life of the church. I would like to propose a different way of thinking about Lent. Because, you see, if the heartbeat of Lent is giving something up or even taking something on in and of itself, then we have a very strange lesson out of the book of Deuteronomy as a way to kick off the season. You see, Deuteronomy, one of the five books of Moses, is an instruction, and it's instruction from God to the people of Israel. And what, the, what he's doing is that he's telling them to remember in gratitude the good things that God has done. And how he tells them to do that is both by gathering up something, the bounty, that's the word that's used, of your life to present before the priest as an act of thanksgiving. And there's a recitation. A wandering Aramean was my father, which is, of course, the character Abraham, who God took out of this particular district, moved him over here, eventually settled him into the land of Egypt, where he and his progeny became this huge, enormous nation that eventually became a threat to the Egyptians they put them into slavery as a way of keeping them under their thumbs. And eventually what happened was, was that God in a very, what's the scripture? A mighty hand and an outstretched arm, real miracles, that God did to set the people of Israel free and to bring them eventually into the land of Israel, the promised land. And so they're remembering with gratitude what God had done for them. And as a tangible expression, of that gratitude, they're presenting something in offering. That's the first lesson for Lent. Now, what does that have to do with giving up chocolate or some other thing that you might want to take on? You see, if that's the focus, I think, you're, I think we're missing something that's really important. Because in my mind, it may just be in my mind, but I hope not. In my mind, Lent is in fact meant to be an expression of gratitude, and of gratitude to God. So that whatever you're choosing to either let go or take on, its purpose is an expression of gratitude. And out of that, a desire to draw nearer to God than you have in the past. Which means, for example, I may choose to give up, oh, I don't know, let's think of something hypothetical. I may choose to give up 30 minutes of television. Now, how's that going to help you draw closer to God? Unless you're watching something on TV that you shouldn't be watching anyway. No, 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 no. Actually, what you're choosing to do, if you choose to let go of that 30 minutes, you're choosing instead to fill it up that same time with something that, in fact, does draw you closer to God. It could be showing up at a Bible study. It could be sure, mean taking on those 30 minutes and doing your own project in a way of doing something of service to someone else. 
It could be making that time to have that time to pray and to read the Bible on your own. You see, it's if you're just trying to let something go, what it winds up feeling like in some ways is a merit badge. I know this is a congregation that's very actively involved in Boy Scouts. And I'm a Boy Scout. You know, once you are, you always are. And I am. And and we worked hard to get merit badges. And that God is not interested in you giving up something for Len as a merit badge. That's that's actually not particularly impressive to him. What matters to him is the fact that he loves you and he cares for you deeply. He wants you to draw closer to him. Therefore, is there anything that pleases God in Lent? Absolutely. It's the effort that you make and I make to take this season to express in a very tangible way our gratitude to God for what, is he, what he has done. And what's he done? Well, see, that takes us right to the Romans lesson where the word that's used to describe God in the Romans lesson that was read this morning is generous. God is generous. That means he gives freely. Why? Because he loves us. In the context of that passage, what the word generous means is this. Look at what God has done. God has created the world and it's filled with beauty. God has raised us up. God has made us in his own image. God sends his son, Jesus Christ, to bring forgiveness and mercy to the healing and the brokenness that is in our lives by his death and resurrection. He opens the way up for eternal life. Heaven! I mean, heaven, people! And that out of and he promises us through that the very companionship of his presence. What does he say? Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. I mean, I mean those are extraordinary and profound promises. They're, they're, they're bigger than we are. In fact, they're actually bigger than we can get our brain around. They're enormous, and they're meant to be, because they're as big as God himself. And what is the entryway to inheriting all that God has given us? If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, this is what it says in Romans, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. In other words, it's really very simple. Entryway into gifts far beyond anything we could ever earn for ourselves is actually through a commitment that's both enormous but easy to understand. And that is the commitment to yield the authority of my life to Jesus. That's what it means to call Jesus Lord. That means I'm subservient. Him. I come under his authority. I'm not in charge of my life anymore. I'm asking God to call the shots. And I'm relying on what God did in Jesus to bring to me the very thing that I need, which is mercy and forgiveness, his companionship, and the promise of eternal life. Death and resurrection. See? And so, and that's so simple that even a child can do it. It's a small thing to inherit enormous, enormous gifts for which we can never qualify based on our goodness. In other words, here's the dilemma. If I'm somehow always thinking that I've got to be good enough to receive God's promises, I could always think a lot of reasons why that's not going to work. Right? Nod your head. Let's be real here. And so... The real, so that the entryway into a relationship with God can never be based on me qualifying because I'm a good person. I may do good things, but there's also a lot of sin and brokenness in my life. And the scripture is incredibly realistic about what it means to be a human being. We're a mixture, you see, of good and evil, sin and righteousness, blessing, as well as deception. Cruelty and all kinds of other things. And you don't have to look very far. All you have to do is look at the thoughts in your hearts that you don't tell anybody. To know that that's true for us. It's not just out there. Yes, we are a part of a very, very broken world. But it's, it's right here. Solzhenitsyn very famously said at one time, the dividing line between good and evil goes straight through the human. It's right here. 
not them. It's me too. So if I'm somehow trying to gain God's favor by doing good things, that's one step forward and two steps back. No, I need God to take the initiative and bring to me what I do not deserve, which is forgiveness. Forgiveness, you see. Not just keeping the scales right. Forgiveness and mercy and entry into eternal life that otherwise for which I would not qualify if the scales have to do, be right more on the good side than the bad side. That's what God brings us in Jesus. You see. So that's why we're able to take a season like this and think about what can I do, in essence, as an offering of gratitude for what God has done for me. And how can I take a step through that act of gratitude that would in fact draw me closer to the God who loves me so profoundly and so dearly. That's that's land, it seems to me. In other words, it's wonderfully realistic. There's no pretending. Yeah, I'm a broken sinner and I need the help of God. And the church is saying, you bet, join the club. We're in this one together. And is it easy? Oh, no. See, that takes us to the third lesson. Remember Jesus in the wilderness being tempted by the devil? Again, that's a realistic picture of what the world can be like at times. God understands that, which is why we need him all the more. Because not only do we deal with issues of human sin, we also live with real evil in our world. Genuine demonic power. And so if that be the case, I need all the help I can get, right? And so that's what God gives us. And therefore, in Lent, we say, I'm taking that step. I'm coming closer to you. That's really what's being enacted by those who are being confirmed and received. They're saying yes in a deeper way in their relationship with Jesus Christ. And it is a commitment to serve him. I met with them just before we, and I said, notice, and you as well, how the word servant And service appears again and again and again. Because to yield to him is to say yes for God to use you in any way that he sees fit. Is it hard? Yes, it is hard. Is it worth it? Beyond a shadow of a doubt. It is absolutely worth it. And so today, on this first Sunday of Lent, as you begin to wrestle and think through, what are these next 40 days going to look like? I would encourage you to think about them as an act of gratitude on your part for what God has given us in Jesus and the great love that he has shown us, that we might draw closer to him and be used by him to make a difference in the lives of other people in the midst of a very broken world that needs this kind of gentleness, care, and compassion so profound. It's courageous to make such a commitment. It's deeply countercultural. What the world expects of us is to give up chocolate and still continue to act like sinners. Prove them wrong. Say yes to Christ and see what he might do in you.